Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Today let's start with some preparation for the upcoming Boeing 737-800. The first thing I want you to go over and practice again is your rotation during the takeoff. The 737-800 is a lot more prone to tail strike than the previous shorter versions are because of the longer body. So Let's discuss the uh, rotation once again, and I would very much recommend you to do a couple of uh, circuits, a couple of training flights where you just um, watch your rotation very closely and be sure that you get it correctly. So I've often seen flight simulators just yanking back on the control column and making the nose shoot up to the sky all the way to 15 degrees within the first second or so. If you do that in an 800, you're pretty much guaranteed to tail strike. So let's talk over it a little bit. First of all, the takeoff speeds are established based on the minimum control speeds, stall speed and tail clearance margin. So shorter bodied airplanes are normally governed by a stall margin, while longer bodied airplanes are normally limited by a tail clearance margin. When a smooth continuous rotation is initiated at uh, the rotation speed, VR, then tail clearance margin is assured because of um, computed takeoff speeds depicted in the FMC, in the um, performance in-flight QRH chapter and of course in uh, the onboard performance tool are based on um, or are developed to provide adequate tail margins. Let's talk about the takeoff itself then. Above 80 knots Relax the forward control column pressure to the neutral position. For optimum takeoff and initial climb performance, initiate a smooth, continuous rotation at VR towards 15 degrees of pitch attitude. However, takeoffs at low thrust settings, so where you have low excess energy available, will reside in a lower initial pitch attitude to target uh, targets to achieve the desired climb speed. So. Basically, if you have done a correct takeoff calculation, you should more or less always end up with 15 degrees of pitch, maybe a little bit more in the uh, shorter Boeings, and um, only if you really use low thrust settings, you should need less than 15 degrees. The use of stabilizer trim during rotation is not recommended, and after liftoff, Use the attitude indicator or indications on the PFD or head-up display as installed um, as the primary pitch reference. Flight director in conjunction with indicated airspeed and other flight instruments is used to maintain proper vertical flight path. However, be aware the flight director is not to be used for takeoff. So only once you have achieved the 15 degrees pitch attitude, thereafter you can use the flight director. Will consistent rotation technique where the pilot uses approximately equal control forces and similar visual cues, the resultant rotation rate differs slightly depending upon airplane body length. However, do not adjust takeoff speeds or control forces to compensate for increased body length. So the same rotation technique is required or recommended on uh, every airplane. And with that, the shorter aircrafts like the 6 and 700 are going to rotate a little bit quicker, while the longer ones, 800 and 900, are going to rotate a little bit slower. Using the um, recommended technique above, the resultant rotation rates vary from 2 to 3 degrees per second, with rates being the lowest on the uh, longer bodied airplanes, and liftoff attitude is achieved in approximately 3 to 4 seconds, depending on the airplane weight and thrust setting. So keep in mind, recommended is 2 to 2.5 degrees per second, which is basically one line on the ADI per second. So one line here represents 2.5 degrees, and so basically we are supposed to pass one line every second. So overall rotation is going to take approximately 7 degrees then. Rotation, uh, sorry, liftoff happens anywhere between uh, 7.5 and, and 10 degrees depending on the airplane in question. So you'll reach that within 3 to 4 seconds. So the landing gear is retracted after a positive rate of climb is indicated on the altimeter and only on the altimeter and retract the flaps in accordance with the uh, flap retraction schedule that uh, I'm sure you all are familiar by, with by now. So, uh, let's quickly talk about the typical takeoff tail clearance then. And for the... we'll discuss the uh, flap 5 margins right now. So, 
for the 737-600, you're looking at a tail clearance of approximately 73 centimeters, just like for the 700 as well, by the way. Lift of attitude in both types is 9 degrees. In the 700, it's 9.1, but you are not even going to notice that. Now, in the 737-800, using flaps 5, the lift off is going to occur a degree earlier, so at 8 degrees, but you only have 51 centimeters of the tail clearance there. So that's 21 centimeters, sorry, 22 centimeters less than you have on the uh, 737-700. And your tail strike attitude is also greatly reduced. So in the 737-600, the tail strike would occur at 16.2 degrees. In the 700, at 14.7, and here comes the 800 at only 11 degrees of pitch you're only uh, you're already going to have a tail strike so looking at it in the 800 with a flat 5 takeoff you have a lift off attitude of 8 degrees with 51 centimeters of uh, tail clearance and at 8 degree you're going to lift off while at 11 degrees you're already going to have a tail strike that gives you 3 degrees of margin there which is just more than one second during the rotation. So that's why you have to be very careful during the rotation in the 800 in order not to produce a tail strike. Now, let's quickly talk about why flap 5 is used as the default uh, flap setting in the 800 then. And that's if we look at the flaps 1 margins. So. In the 737-700, with a flap 1 takeoff, you're having 73 centimeters of uh, tail clearance, just like with flap 5. In the 800, however, <coughs> the lift-off attitude increases from 8 to 8.5 degrees, and the tail clearance reduces from 51 centimeters for flap 5 to only 33 centimeters with flap 1. So you can see, using flap 1, your tail is getting really close to the runway already, just 33 centimeters. And, and tail strike is going to occur, of course, even sooner after liftoff attitude than it would with flap 5. So, you see where the problem is. Of course, we have to ensure, of course, we ha just have to be aware that um, tail strike is not immediately going to occur if you rotate a little bit faster than the recommended technique. You still have 53 centimeters of margin there. So, don't just shh your pants just because you've rotated a little bit faster. However, be aware that um, the limits are there and if you really overdo it, then chances are you are going to tail strike the airplane. Something that helps a little bit protecting against the tail strike is the elevator dead band in the Boeing 737-800. So at approximately 8 degrees of pitch, the elevator is entering the dead band, which basically is turbulence from the wings, reducing elevator effectiveness and therefore reducing the rate at which the nose rises unless the pilot pulls stronger on the control column. In the 800 that's going to be necessary, so at about 7.5 degrees you have to increase back pressure on the control column until 10 degrees and then you have to relax it again to the original um, control column position because the elevators are going to leave the dead band there again. You'll get more details about that in a separate video. So, let's have a look at what the correct takeoff rotation rate is actually going to look like then. Be aware that I'm having my eyes outside the airplane until the nose starts coming off the ground and then I'm transitioning onto the attitude direction indicator on the PFD in order to ensure correct rotation rate. If you get the right feeling for it, then you can uh, also do the initial rotation just by looking outside, but generally it's recommended look outside until the nose comes off the runway, then transition to the inside and have a look at the ADI. So, let's get going. Timing. Stabilized. That take off thrust. Don't forget to release that parking brake after you've done a lengthy briefing on the runway. I'm zooming in a little bit so that you can see the PFD better. 
So, runway, nose comes off the runway. Gear up. And that's about it. Don't rotate any faster than, than this guy's. So, that already concludes our look at the rotation then. So, thank you very much for joining. Hope that you found this one useful. I really recommend you to start practicing this because um, once the 800 is out you want to have that rotation taken mastered otherwise you'll just waste precious time preparing for um, not tail striking the airplane and I'm sure that you would rather spend this time on um, actually flying it. So, so I would like to thank you very much for being with us today, hope that you have enjoyed this video. As always if you want to support the channel there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Let me know what you think about the rotation in the 737. Do you think it's easier or is it harder than in the A320? Really looking forward to hear your comments and if you haven't done so yet, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.